What's the difference between concentric and eccentric muscle contractions? Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in this video we're going to understand about the difference between the phrase concentric and eccentric and it comes in a couple of different guises so we're going to explain both of those today. You need to know this as part of your level two and level three anatomy and physiology exam and it's really important for understanding how the movements work and therefore understanding how exercises work when you come on to understanding your exercise library as a fitness professional as well. Before we go any further though into the detail, just to let you know there are some mock questions that relate to the content we're going to talk about today. If you're on our blog, you just scroll to the bottom once you've finished watching and you will see the mock questions there. If you're not on our blog yet, click the link that is with this video, it will take you to that blog and you can find the mock questions to test your knowledge afterwards. So let's dive in and understand about these phrases. And there's actually two phrases. So you've got the word concentric and the word eccentric. But just to kind of make you aware of the, how they're used, they're used slightly differently in two different contexts. Sometimes we talk about concentric and eccentric muscle contractions. And other times we talk about concentric and eccentric phases of the movement. Now we're going to explore both of these so that they make sense to you and they are related because once you understand one you can understand the other. However just be aware that when you are looking at your exam question that you might have for your level two or level three anatomy exam you want to really understand what is it that they're asking. Are they asking about the contraction type or are they asking about the phase of the movement because it's the same word and they are linked but it could be referring to something different, which could change the answer that you choose on your exam. Really important. So let's start off with the first part. If your exam question is phrased something along the lines of what happens during a concentric contraction of the muscle, then we're talking about the muscle length. So we're talking about what happens when the muscle contracts. Now, this is really important because you've got two different types of contraction whereby there is changes in movement in the muscle. So when your muscle contracts, and you should have learned about the sliding filament theory already, if not, then make sure you click the link that is alongside this blog. So when you're going through an understanding about the contraction length and that sliding filament theory, essentially you learn that when our muscle contracts, it changes length along the length of the fibre. So the origin goes closer to the insertion, or the insertion goes closer to the origin, and the muscle shortens, and then it lengthens again. And that's the phrasing of concentric and eccentric. So concentric contraction is whereby the muscle shortens. I like to think of it as the muscles collapsing. It begins with a C, okay? So you've kind of got concentric, begins with a C, and collapsing begins with a C. Your origin insertion get closer together. Whereas an eccentric contraction is whereby they're getting further apart. The muscle is elongating, it's lengthening. And that's really important to remember those differences. So if I was to do a bicep curl action, I'm basically going, well, if I concentrically contract my muscle, then the two ends are getting closer together, the two attachment points, therefore I'm shortening the muscle. Whereas if I'm lengthening the muscle, that's my eccentric contraction. So that's the first thing to be aware of. If it's talking about the contraction, so the muscle contraction and what's happening, con concentric means that it's shortening, and eccentric means that it is lengthening. The other way that this type of question might come up for your exam is to say what joint action occurs at the hip during the eccentric phase of a squat. It sounds different, but really it's talking about the same type of thing. But that's quite a confusing question because of the layers of information that are inside it. So when we look at this, you're basically starting off by saying, well, here we've got to understand the phase of the movement instead of the contraction. So let's have a look at it. Let's take a squat, for example. You've got a lowering phase, whereby you start standing and you lower yourself down to the floor and you end up with flexion at the knee, flexion at the hip. And then you've got a lifting phase and then that lifting phase, you're gonna extend at the knee and extend at the hip so as you stand back up. So you've got these two phases of every movement. One is with gravity, where you're lowering down, and the other one is against gravity as you lift up. Now, these are the concentric and eccentric phases of the movement. A concentric phase is whereby you're lifting up towards the clouds. 
C for clouds, C for concentric. See where we're going here? And that's the load of the body. So when we're doing a body weight squat, that's quite easy to understand. If I'm moving a dumbbell, that's the load of the dumbbell going up towards the clouds. If I'm moving a cable pulley or a lat pull down, it's the load, it's the weight stack that goes up to the clouds that is important here. That's your concentric phase. It's also the phase whereby the muscle, the prime mover, is shortening. So it kind of links in with what we were talking about earlier. But that's our concentric phase. And therefore the eccentric phase is whereby the load or the body weight is going down towards the earth. And that will feel easier because we're going with gravity. So eccentric starts with an E and we're going down towards the earth. So you've got these two clear different phases of every movement, a concentric phase when you're lifting and an eccentric phase when you are lowering. And that's the difference between how these phrases are used. You've basically got concentric and eccentric muscle contractions, which relate to the length of the muscle. And then you've got the concentric and eccentric phases of a movement that you need to understand in terms of whether you're lifting or lowering. And that gives you an understanding of how to unpick those complex exam questions. So this is my tip for you on exam day. When you get that question, read it really carefully and understand what is it really asking? Is it asking for the muscle length or is it asking for the phase of the movement inside an exercise? This will help you then answer it. If you do want to test your knowledge on some mock questions, then remember you've got these underneath the blog or click the link to go straight there. And then you'll also be able to then check that what you're learning and how you're unpicking those questions is correct and the answers are on there too. If you want further help with your revision, especially in relation to how the body moves, body in motion, understanding muscles and contractions, it can be much easier to learn via video where somebody's explaining the differences to you rather than trying to read it out of a manual. And that's exactly what our Revision Mastery Bootcamp does. So if you do want extra help, make sure you check out our Revision Mastery Bootcamp as well. Thank you so much for watching today. And I would really love it if you drop a comment underneath this video that shares your big takeaway from today. What did you learn from today's video? Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.